If you've been following Zenda Zone Zero's community since launch, then I'm sure you've seen all the Doom postings surrounding the game. A lot of game mechanics just don't resonate with a lot of people. They don't like the TV system, they don't like the combat because it's too easy, the story is too simple and boring, etc. But me? Gungaga. As someone who knew almost nothing about this game when it launched, I really enjoyed everything this game has offered so far. I actually quite like the TV mechanic. The combat is something I didn't know I really wanted in a gacha game until now. The story right now might be simple, but it's a fun experience. And with the recent lore teaser that the developers uploaded a few days ago, there's an overarching narrative that we just fully aren't aware of yet, just like what happened or is happening with Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail, and Withering Waves. There's a lot of negativity going around, so I just want to give my thoughts and opinions as someone who genuinely really likes this game. For the TV system, I heard ever since the closed beta tests that the TVs were the biggest complaints that people had. And honestly, I get it. You got into this game for its combat, but now you suddenly have to play a different type of game for 5 minutes and only experience the combat for one? And this happens for basically every commission. The whole game revolves around the TV system, even in Hollow Zero. But for me, I had no expectations about the gameplay, so having a mix of both was a surprise, but a welcome one. It's actually kind of rewarding getting to the final enemy after dungeon calling through the entire area. It kind of reminds me of games like The Binding of Isaac, Cult of the Lamb, and Chrono Arc, games with a similar-ish mechanic that I very much enjoy. I also heard the opinion that it shouldn't be in the main story because it disconnects you from it, which I don't fully disagree with. If they removed it from the main story, it would be fine for most people and keeping it in side content would still please the people that do like it. There was one scene in a later chapter where it's supposed to be really dark but you can't really tell how dark it really is because they only show it through the lens of the TV. It's very different showing something via the TV as opposed to what the characters themselves can see. But at the very least, it still gets the point across. You have to get through the area by only seeing what's directly in front of you because it's that dark. That's why I don't think the TVs in the story are that bad. I think that it actually helps with understanding what's going on as opposed to just listening to the characters talk back and forth Fire Emblem style. The TV system is interactive enough that I can visualize what's going on. I'm not going through the entire area without a single clue of what I'm doing and why I'm even there. It might not be the greatest way to tell a story, but it's honestly not even that bad. They also tease this giant ethereal through the TV system and the characters talk about how massive and intense it is, but you don't really know just what an absolute unit it actually is until you get to its boss fight later in the story where you can finally see what those characters were talking about. And I think the payoff for that was pretty neat. The way they utilize the TVs and the side commissions too are pretty unique. I was playing freaking plants versus zombies in the TVs in one mission and in the other I was playing what I think you would call auto chess where your bangboos fight automatically and you can give them upgrades like in TFT. As for the combat, people say that you just mash a single button which is kind of true in the early game at least. Obviously the beginning levels are going to be way easier than the mid to late game content so you can just mash one button. I mean sure you can mash every button when you're playing smash against a level 1 CPU but that strategy won't be as effective once you fight a high level CPU or even a real player. Eventually you're gonna have to learn the mechanics of the game to have a better time as you progress especially if you want to clear the stages with an S rank. In this game just like all the other Hoya games as well as Withering Waves has a skill button and an ultimate. They all follow the same basic rotation. Spam your abilities and attacks and swap to the next character to do the same thing. You really won't just be mashing one button. Some characters in this game actually discourage players from just mashing. Soldier 11 imbues her basic attacks with fire when you press the attack button at the right time. Nero style from Devil May Cry 5. Using her skill or ultimate isn't required to deal the fire damage, but obviously you should use those abilities properly to maximize the fire suppression uptime. Koleda and Ambi let you use their skill skills in the middle of their basic attack combo string. Ambi also has a different combo string after her third hit where you wait a bit then attack just like in other hack and slash games like Bayonetta or DMC. Even Nicole has a secret move not mentioned anywhere in the game where she can spin while using her skill and if you let go of the button early, the black hole will shoot in the air and drop from the sky instead of shooting it in front of Nicole which can help with timings and positioning. There might be other characters with similar mechanics but I don't have everyone so that's all I got. This at least means that new characters can have similar kits with maybe even more combo strings. The combos might not be as expansive as games like Nier Automata or Astral Chain, but this is a gacha game. It's supposed to be simple for the mobile slash casual audience, but it's more than just mashing. And as someone who loves the hack and slash genre, the combat in this game kind of just checks all the boxes for me. You got flashy attacks, different
different combo strings, incredibly groovy music that fits the setting and atmosphere of the game. They're all great. All the games that I mentioned previously are great. Having the combat in this gacha game be a hack and slash is great. The biggest offender of the hack and slash genre are the Warriors games, more specifically the Zelda and Fire Emblem ones, where I dropped over 100 hours on each of them. Why? Because it's fun mowing down mobs of enemies. It's fun seeing my favorite characters do incredibly flashy attacks with rock music in the background. The stories in the games might be dog shit, but I'm not playing those games for the story. I'm playing these games for the game play and the music don't get me started on the music and in zen zone zero it's the same thing it's all fun and luckily the story isn't dog shit. it's not incredibly convoluted and we're just slowly getting introduced to the world of new eridu and his characters why doesn't bell feel like a part of the world instead of just being a silent self-insert protagonist with amnesia no hate to the other games that fall under that criteria, but I've just played so many games with the same premise, and with Zenla Zone Zero, it's a breath of fresh air. This story has already made me shed a tear during the Bella Box scene, although I am someone who gets pretty emotional when it comes to video games, some examples being The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and 3. If you know, you know. As for the characters, I don't really have any strong opinions about them. I think the character designs are pretty good, pretty standard anime Horyo character design, although the ones that stand out to me the most are Ambi and Billy. Billy's color scheme works really well and characters who dual wield guns are always sick. They're always so sick. And Ambi, she's perfect. Just look at her. Oh yeah, and also Grace for two very big reasons. Her English voice actor and her relationship with Koleida obviously. Weird. I'm not a huge fan of maids, so they're kind of whatever. I'm not a fan of furry characters either, but I wouldn't be mad if I got Lycon. Bro is mad hot, so I understand where the furries are coming from. And after playing through the story, I'm definitely gonna pull for Zhu Yuan and Ching Yi if I have enough. I'm definitely not gonna have enough. Now I want to touch on the overworld a bit and what you can do there because man, I I'm sure a lot of you have heard this already, but it really does feel like a Persona game. Different landmarks in the city that you can travel to, texting your friends to hang out to increase your bond level, the music that you can just vibe to while AFK, it's pretty great, you know. I've said it before and I'll say it again, it really does feel like you're a part of the world and the music really helps you feel like you belong. Sometimes you'll find your characters ordering at the noodle shop or waiting in line for a scratch ticket. The time of day changes when you do activities and and at the end of the day, you're reminded to go to bed. Some might see that as a lame mechanic, but it's the tiny details like that that make the world so immersive. Although there isn't really a lot you can do at each location, and some shops in the new areas are just repeats of shops in the first area, so I'm hoping they add something new there. It might feel like the game is trying to be a lot of different genres at once, and honestly it is, but I think it works. Maybe not for the people that just want combat, but for people like me. You know, I've played so many different games in my life, and Zenla Zone Zero has game mechanics that I'm familiar with and enjoy. I like the social aspect of Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley, and obviously Persona. I like the hack and slash combat of Metal Gear Rising and Hi-Fi Rush. I like the dungeon crawling aspect of Etrian Odyssey and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. All of these together make up a game that really resonates with me. If I had to give a score, it'd probably be an 8 out of 10. It's definitely not a masterpiece, far from it actually. There are a few things that I'm not fond of, like how the shops in Luminous Square are just the same shops on 6th Street. At least some of them have different NPCs, which makes sense. It's also, at the end of the day, a gacha game that preys on the consumer for its money, with the terrible artifact slash relic system carried over that I'm so sick of. But hey, at least the game is free. If the game was $70, it's definitely not an 8 out of 10. An 8 out of 10 that I wouldn't recommend to most people, but a game that I'll gladly drop hundreds of hours into.